Hi everyone, in today's tactics video, I'm gonna review the Glorious Linen Rust Battle Tank. Hopefully the majority of you have got the new 9th edition codex, either by buying the Cadia Stands army set, borrowing a copy from a friend, or downloading um, a version from the internet. This video will focus mostly on the turret weapon choices, but will also explore the unit's more broader uh, tactics, including its core data sheet, uh, sponsored weapons and accessories, tank orders, tank aces, and very briefly, regimental doctrines. So starting with the absolute basics, Limon Russ is available either as a tank commander, which is an obvious single model uh, character unit, normal Limon Russ, uh, which can be fielded in units of up to three models that must deploy together and then act independently. Now there is no change to the old codex, however interestingly, you can still take as many tank commanders as you'd like, something a lot of us assumed uh, wouldn't be the case, perhaps facing restriction on the number of character types you could take, uh, which some other armies have. So the probable reason for the restriction not being applied is that uh, the difference between the tank commander and normal Limon Russ is now uh, very minimal, with the tank commander only being able to issue mechanized orders in addition. Everything else on the data sheet is identical, with the tank commander costing 160 points base, and standard Limon Russ costing 150. Its core data sheet has been buffed since the 8th edition book, um, with the key standouts being 13 wounds, previously 12, 6 attacks, previously 3, and the 2 plus armor save has remained from the balanced data slate. It should also be said that both of these units have reduced in points pretty significantly, so with these improvements they should feel more powerful on the tabletop. Now their accessories and weapon options have all remained um, in line with the old book, and all accessories including storm bolters, heavy stubbers, hunter killer missiles, Armor tracks, uh, dozer blades are all priced at five points. A minor point to note is in, in, in the actual codex, um, the dozer blades are costed at zero for the standard Lehman Russ and five for the tank commander. This is probably a typo, and I assume, uh, and I'll always assume it's five points for both units, but you could technically be fielding dozer blades for free on all your standard Lehman Russes. The sponson hull weapons are all remain the same likewise with a las cannon in the front sponson uh, being able to be swapped out with a heavy flame or heavy bolter and costing five points the sponson weapon pairs are 10 points for heavy bolters and flamers 20 points for the plasma cannons and 30 points for the multi melters the separate turret weapon choices are all included in the base cost and will make comparing them a lot easier later so a bone basic tank commander and Lehman Russ are then obviously 165 and 155 for, uh, with just the front sponson, or 210 uh, or 200 points with all accessories and most expensive multi melters. As a, to which of these are to take from an accessories point of view, the armored track should always be used where possible, given they provide a baby armor of contempt, which will minimize chip damage, um, helping to keep us on a 2 plus against light weapons. As to the sponsored weapons, uh, this gets a lot more subjective, driven by how you plan to use your tanks. Will there be a static gun block uh, screened by multiple infantry squads? Or will there be a mid-table bully pushed up early and embracing the turret weapon rule where they can shoot out of melee? In the former, uh, weapons like las cannons and plasma cannons uh, could be used uh, given their strong strength, AP and range. Uh, and whilst being more aggressive, use things like bolters and heavy flamers, uh, which is advisable to manage enemy units that will eventually target in melee. I kind of feel the multi-melter may be too expensive as a 24 inch range will restrict potential. Sure, you could take the regimental doctrine, Heloin weapons for an extra four inches, uh, but there are some much stronger uh, army doctrines out there. So moving on to the main course of turret weapons. As said, there are seven options which all cost the same points. Now an auto include in any army list is the Vanquisher Battle Cannon. Having been massively buffed from 8th edition, this ignores Invol Saves which is so so strong. Combined with an AP-5, D3 mortal wounds and damage D3 plus 6, you're inflicting a minimum of 8 wounds per successful uh, wounding hit. AP-5 with Armour of Contempt is giving the most well armoured uh, opponents a 6 plus save, so possible, but statistically unlikely. Sure, your opponent could uh, just present you with chaff units to shoot at, but just the threat of it gives you a degree of uh, control in the game. 
I like the Tau Hammerhead, which was terrifying when it was first announced. A Lemon Rust isn't a glass cannon, thanks to its toughness 8 and 2 plus save. A cool combo that is pretty popular right now is equipping a tank commander with one of these and giving them the tank ace, veteran commander, allowing it to take an additional regimental doctrine. So taking elite sharp troopers, uh, sharp shoot shooters, which gives you a free reroll on one hit roll when shooting, ensuring that the Vanquisher cannon always connects on its target. Now for the remaining six turret weapons, I'd say there are two leaders of the pack, and those are the Trusty Battle Cannon and the Executioner Plasma Cannon. The Battle Cannon has been buffed to a very powerful flat three damage, and the Executioner uh, Plasma with AP4 will be very helpful in a world of armor of contempt. They both have a heavy D6 plus three, so an average of six shots per turn. And whilst we have lost the ability to fire twice with grinding advance from the old codex, uh, more consistent high damage uh, weapons is better than variable number of shots, which also had variable damage. For example, D3 damage on the old battle cannon. The executioner plasma cannon should only be fired overcharged when receiving the mechanized order gunner's kill on sight to help avoid any self-inflicted mortal wounds. You could go all out on the plasma, taking plasma sponsor weapons, and this would mean you are uh, working the synergies as you supercharge all weapons and benefit from the reroll once to hit across all weapon types, whilst keeping the risk of mortal wounds on the single Lemon Russ. Now the next uh, potential consideration is the Demolisher Battle Cannon. A former staple from the old codex, I say these have been kind of nerfed. In this sense, there are now uh, there is now no way to reroll the number of shots from the Heavy D6. This leaves the dice gods wildly open to giving you some terrible uh, rolls. Yes, the average on a D6 is three, but we've all rolled plenty of ones and twos in our time. Strength 10, AP 3 and improved D3 plus three damage is outstanding. But I'd say the 24 inch range and the, um, as mentioned, variable uh, number of shots is risky. Like I mentioned earlier about the uh, multi-melters, you could extend their range by four inches from hollow weapons. But again, I'm not sure if focusing on just extending the range of a couple of weapons is the way to go in the new codex. Okay, now the mighty Heavy 20 Gatling Cannon. This has been improved where formerly it was strength 5 AP 0 and now it's strength 6 AP 1. So wounding any squishy T3 Aldari, Tau Fire Warriors or Trader Guardsmen on a lovely 2 plus. I feel that its use is relatively match dependent, obviously you're applying upon your opponent taking a Horde army. Sure, if you're going to be playing into Orcs or something that fields, or someone that fields Hordes of Tyranids, it could be an option, but overall it's a weaker choice. Next is the Eradicator Nova Cannon. Uh, this is relatively similar to the old Codex, but now a flat 2 damage and gets an average of 8 shots thanks to D3 plus 6 shots. Its uh, volume of shots is pretty decent, but 36 inch range is stunted for a weapon that isn't all that powerful. Just go for a Battle Cannon in this case. And lastly, the Exterminator Auto Cannon, which has been improved to be a stronger Strength 8, an additional AP to AP2, and also keeping the flat 2 damage. In the old book, it was Heavy 4, so getting out 8 shots with Grinding Advance, versus now being Heavy 6. This is a bit of a weird one, being a jack of all trades like the Auto Cannons in the Infantry Heavy Weapon teams. It could be helpful given it doesn't have the blast keyword, meaning it does uh, get to target units it's tagged in melee with, uh, versus the other ones which all have blasts, or the majority of blasts, and can't do so. Sure, the turret weapon rule allows the big guns to fire out of melee, but your Lehman Russ is still stuck in melee, and being able to shake off any units on its own could certainly help. But I think this option will be overshadowed by some other options. So to reinforce this view, let's get into the Math Hammer Classroom. Here I've listed out each of the weapon stats and put them into a Toughness 3 5 plus save target, a Toughness 5 2 plus save target, and a Toughness 8 3 plus save target. I've taken the average number of shots that would hit, the average that would wound, and the average number of saves your opponent would fail, and this goes through to the amount of damage that would carry through on average. So you can see, for example, a Demolisher into a Toughness 3 target uh, would have two hits, two wounds that would both uh, translate to two failed saving throws, given a 5 plus save is overwhelmed by the AP3. Whilst the Gatling Cannon gets 11 wounds, 
and a nine saving throws thanks to your opponent having a six plus save. A consideration remember uh, on the toughness three target uh, with the damage is that the majority of toughness three targets have only got a single wound. So unless you're targeting a squishy toughness three character, uh, every weapon aside from the Gatling Cannon is wasting its damage potential. So in this case, the Gatling Cannon is the best into squishy targets, obviously. Now looking at the Toughness 5 target, you can see that there are a lot less failed saving throws on account for the strong armor save with only the Executioner cutting through thanks to AP4 and delivering the most wounds. Into the Toughness 8 target, you can then clearly see the number of wounds drops given you're wounding on a 5 plus or at best a 4 plus with the demolisher delivering the most eventual damage. Now what this exercise illustrates is that obviously each weapon can be effective into the right target. However, unless you are playing consistently into a certain type of army type, weapon versatility is always the way to go. So here I've also put down the clear benefits and disadvantages of each of those that I mentioned earlier. I feel having looked at these um, at, with the math combined with this, that the Battle Cannon is a strong option with a 72 inch range and a flat 3 damage, and likewise the Executioner with its AP4. Not shown here is the Vanquisher Battle Cannon, which as said before should always be included in your list on one Lehman Russ for the Invol uh, Save Defeating um, ability. Now there is also uh, the Relic Gatekeeper Battle Cannon, which can be given to a Tank Commander character. So if you're taking two tank commanders, I give one the Vanquisher with the veteran commander tank case I spoke about earlier, and the other with this D3 plus six, strength nine, AP3, flat three damage weapon. You could buddy this up with the tank case, uh, meticulous calibrator, so you're unaffected by any negative modifiers to hit due to cover or improving their armor save on the target. As for the other tank aces, uh, the way it works now means you can basically take a pocket full of tank aces. Mechanized pa uh, pack rat or trance tankiology would take some pretty serious firepower or very potent character melee attacks to be worth it. If you were to use this, you want to be pretty aggressive with this, pushing up the board early. And ideally getting it uh, tagged with some very nasty melee units to further uh, trance tankiology to actually pay off. Knight of Piety, however, with a 5 plus invul save and 5 plus fill no pain against mortal wounds will definitely pay off. Assuming we lose Armour of Contempt next year, a 5 plus invul save will probably always be paying off more than you think. Against Melter weapons, you're already getting use out of the 5 plus invul save, given you'll be usually saving on a 6. And a gimmicky idea I've thought of is that you could um, have one on a Lehman Russ with Sponson uh, Plasma Cannons and the Executioner Plasma Cannons, push it right up outside of mechanized order range, still supercharge, and any self-inflicted mortal wounds you're saving up on a 5+. plus. I then feel that the Master of Camouflage is mediocre, given this can be achieved with a smokescreen stratagem, but I guess there is argument of whether it's better to spend 25 points up front or one command point throughout the game. Lastly, still Commander could be helpful if you're taking a very balanced list with enough infantry to benefit from a tank commander giving out Perfectus orders. I guess one way to think about it is that a Commissar costs 40 points, so you'd actually be saving 15 points um, if investing into the still Commander tank ace. Of course, however, a Commissar model is much easier to hide than a great big Lemon Rust battle tank. And lastly is Regimental Doctrines. Now I'm not going to give this anywhere near enough justice, and there'll definitely be a follow-up video looking at doctrines overall, and army list composition. I'd say however, that given that the doctrines are all quite specific, in the sense that they mostly uh, require specific units, i.e. the brutal strength one, uh, benefiting infantry, we've got uh, quite a few to look at, including armored superiority, blitz division, purloin weapons, trophy hunters, Elite Sharpship as it's spoken about, and Industrial Efficiency, Swifted as a Wind, and also Born Soldiers. Personally, I think if you're taking a lot of Lehman Russes in a heavy list, say at least six of them, two to consider are Armored Superiority and Swift as a Wind. Lehman Russes counting as five models is a huge objective holding boost, and combined with the tank order, Shock and Awe, can really be helping out. Pairing this with Swift as a Wind, 
you'd have a five model Count Lieben Russ, advance on average 17 inches, and still be able to shoot thanks to the mechanized order full throttle. Brilliant. Now, of course, born soldiers will more often be not uh, hard to ignore. Auto wounding on sixes is very, very powerful, but I'd look at the wider composition of your army lists before considering it just to use on Lehman Russes. So in summary, the weapon choices I'd suggest are the Executioner uh, Plasma Cannon or Battle Cannon um, and fielding a tank commander with a Vanquisher Battle Cannon. Sponson weapons will either be LAS Cannons, uh, Bolters and Plasma for backfield static gun blocks or Flamers and Bolters for your aggressively played uh, Rosses. Tank Aces used will be the auto include Veteran Commander to get that glorious reroll on the Vanquisher Battle Cannon and at least Knight on Piety on your aggressively played them in Russ for a 5 plus invul save and 5 plus uh, feel no pain against mortal wounds. So it could be very, very handy into Psychohedia lists, for example. So yep, hopefully helpful as you consider which Lehman Russes and how to use them. A final comment to consider is if uh, Armour of Contempt comes off us in the next balanced data slate, probably in February next year. Is it if it does come off, then overall Lehman Russes will obviously be a lot less survivable. If it stays, then combined with a point drop and overall um, data sheet buff, Lehman Russes are going to be very, very powerful. So yep, what do you think of the new Lehman Russes? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to support me, you can do so by buying some channel merchandise, uh, joining my Patreon platoon, or leaving a like, comment, or by subscribing. Let's get me bayonet sharp, last gone oiled. Faith from the Emperor Strong, Patreon platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn. Tank Commander Mitchell. Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten. Color Sergeant DuPont. Sergeant Broxius. Adal, the Colonel Merrill, Veterans Gibson, Hall, Lundine, Guardsman Beard, Coquelin, Flint, Hills, Malik, Nitin, Nguyen, Smith, Tom, Tompkin, Conscript Bosson, England, Gilliam, Goodwin.